All right. Well, it has been a long time <laughs> since I've done this. Uh, me and Taylor had to take a break last year. Things just got a little complicated in our real lives and we decided let's, let's put the podcast on hold. Um, but I wanted to talk about Star Wars. Um, so I decided why not do it here? So this is going to be a little different than the podcast. This is more of just kind of a rant or me talking to the microphone. But I, just like a lot of other people, saw the rise of Skywalker. And I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I've seen all the movies. I've seen some of the cartoon stuff. And I've played some of the games. So it's like I I have a decent knowledge or exposure to the world. And, uh, man, this movie was really disappointing. I didn't have a lot of expectations. I actually, I even told my friend going into it, uh, cause I kind of bought into the whole red letter media's, uh, theory about time travel that as long as they don't time travel, I'll be happy because I thought before going into the movie, That was as bad as it was going to get. Just don't time travel and it'll be good. Then I saw the movie and I wish they would have time traveled because I didn't feel like they really did anything. It felt like they played it so safe and every choice, everything almost felt by committee. It reminded me a whole lot of the YouTube rewind of 2019 where it was just like, hey, we tried something last year, it didn't work out, so we're just going to do everything that people liked. Whatever got the most likes, that's what we're going to do. And that's what a lot of the choices in Rise of Skywalker felt like. The Chewie getting a medal, or the the <clears throat> um, all the callbacks to the original series, and things that didn't make sense in a narrative sense for the movie. Or the trilogy, but made sense for the audience who had been invested. And not that that's a problem. I don't think it's bad to do things for your audience to be like, hey, you've watched this for whatever it was, 43 years. Here's a nostalgia fest. The problem that I personally have with that idea, though, is that I felt like that was The Force Awakens. I felt like The Force Awakens was, hey, look at this. We want to point out all the stuff that you used to love and what, you know, what this series was. And I, I didn't like that either. I, I disagreed with that at the time, but I was like, okay, that's fine. If that's what you want, if you want it to be about nostalgia, you did it. And then they did The Last Jedi, which completely undid everything. And I also wasn't the biggest fan of that. I feel like, had they actually done less um, with, uh, like, spent more time on the ship. It made it more claustrophobic and almost like a, a horror film. It would have been more exciting to me, personally. I think it would have been less Star Wars, but I guess that's kind of what I want from a Star Wars movie, <laughs> to not be a Star Wars movie, which probably not fair, but I can't really help that. Uh, but anyway, so getting back to Rise of Skywalker, there's just a lot of things that felt like they were just decided with the idea of, who cares? It doesn't matter. Let's just do things that people will recognize, that people will like. And it just kind of felt insulting. It kind of felt like they just thought everyone watching the movie was dumb. And I know... I have friends who really liked it and who enjoyed it and felt the satisfaction from the callbacks. And I don't think they're dumb. I don't think that's, that's not what I'm trying to say, but I, I feel like the makers didn't care. (laughs) Uh, Ultimately they didn't, they just got to the point of like, well, this doesn't really make sense. Like specifically the final scene, Ray lays arrest the lightsabers at Luke's original home on was it Moss Eisley, I think. And why? Why would that happen? She won, has no connection to there. 
really no reason why Luke would ever talk about there to her. Um, he hated it growing up. He always wanted to leave. He left and found his purpose. He became Luke Skywalker after he left, after he gave up that safety, after, you know, he, he moved on, um, from where his only family, other than Leia, but he didn't know about them, were uh, brutally murdered. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm remembering that right, like I believe, uh, they got set on fire. So like, not, not like a, a, a great, cool place to be, but you know, that's, that's whatever. Like, so there, there's no significance for Luke. Leia, not connected to it at all. So even less significance for her. And Ray, the likelihood of her knowing about it, it makes zero sense. But yet, the audience does. It's that iconic scene of Luke standing looking at the moons and, you know, everything in the background. And, like, th- that's what they wanted to recreate. And they did. And they did it effectively. But they just said, who cares if it makes sense? It'll be cool. And the thing that really sucks about it <laughs> is the whole Martin Scorsese comment about Marvel films not being films and them just being like a theme park attraction or a roller coaster. I don't remember exactly what he said. And that's what the rise of Skywalker was to me. There was no story. There was no investment. If you didn't know anything before this movie would be complete nonsense. If you went into this movie blind, it would be complete nonsense. And yet it just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of giving up on, uh, blockbuster movies. I think that was a big part of my frustration with movies while doing the podcast the last year, the year before was we were, I was watching things that I could see living in Thailand. There's not a lot of options. And none of them felt special. None of them felt good or entertaining or like I was invested in them. Like I enjoyed the Marvel stuff, but even that, I didn't feel like I was being surprised or treated with respect. And I don't, I'm not trying to sound pretentious <laughs> or like serve me and make something that only I would like. It just... I don't know. I, I, I watched, um, one shot to kill, one shot to die, one shot of death, one shot of the dead. Um, and it's, I want to say it's a Japanese movie and it's all in subtitles and it's a, a, a zombie film and you watch it and they, they do, they make so many choices in that movie that they pay off later just for the people who notice things that don't make sense. And I was like, that was a good experience. I was invested. I was engaged. I wanted to know what happened. I wanted to understand why this was happening. And they came back and paid it off. But yet, in Rise of Skywalker, Finn is talking about this thing that he needs to tell Ray the whole movie and they don't. They don't come back to it. And I know JJ said that it was he's force sensitive or whatever. But oh man, it like I said, it just felt insulting. Like it doesn't even feel true. I mean, I know he was force sensitive in the movie because how else do you solve problems other than magic? Like every time Every time they had an issue, that was it. Just magic. And I know the Force is part of it, but that's a big issue why I don't like Star Wars in general. Because they, they don't, they don't put the characters in a position where they have to solve something. Everything is almost instant. Even Chewbacca dying 
is revealed in the next scene that he's okay. They don't want the audience to feel tension. They want to remind you like, hey, this is fun. Don't worry. And that's just not a good story. Or it's not a good, it's not a good movie. Because you don't get connected. You don't feel like it's important. And that's what they, <laughs> how they made it. I don't know. It's a, it's very strange because in game had a lot of things that were all fan service, but yet it's a lot harder to have that, that feeling of like, Oh, they didn't care because their moments felt like they cared so much that cap picking up the hammer at the end of Endgame was a reference to a movie that happened, what, 10 movies ago? Whenever Age of Ultron came out? Him moving it slightly? That was a reference to that. And there's a small moment that paid off because they knew it was something important to the audience. Not because they remember it, but because it was something a seed planted a long time ago. And there's such a difference between that and... Ray burying the lightsabers on Moss Eisley or Chewbacca getting a medal. There's just, it's just disappointing. <laughs> I feel like a dad who's upset with their kids and like, you really, you really let me down here. Um, and so I like, like I said, I don't think you're dumb if you like this movie. You can like this movie. You can love this movie. You can love the whole series, the franchise, whatever. I don't care. But I think it's a little ridiculous to tell someone they're wrong for thinking this is a bad movie. Because it's structured really poorly. It moves so quickly. And like, there's nothing to hang your hat on. The scenes are, are going by so quick that there's no investment that there's no problem. Even, <laughs> even the, um, uh, on the, uh, oh man, the, the Star Destroyer, they take out that antenna. Then they, the bad guys are like, oh, let's just make our, this ship the antenna and everyone will follow us out, which, okay, whatever. Like, I, I guess that makes sense. Like, maybe all, why couldn't all of them just guide themselves out if one could? But I, I don't know. Maybe I missed something there. Um, right? That, so that's, that's a decent moment of tension. But yet, the next scene, Finn is like, it's that one. I know it's that one because I know. And that's all the explanation you get. It's all the explanation you need. And it's just so <laughs> lazy. Like, let them live in it. Let them stress. Let them be afraid that they've lost. But no, you got to fix it right away. Also, I don't understand why Palpatine blew his own face off. Did that make sense to anybody else? Like, imagine you touch something hot. You recoil. You move away. You stop. You don't continue. You don't push harder. You're like, oh, that's hot. Let me keep doing this. As soon as Ray aimed the force lightning back at him, why didn't he stop? Why did he push harder and keep going until he melted his own face away? And why, why was that not her killing him? That was his own rage. So she didn't become a Sith. She didn't have all that enter her. But what's the difference if she would have chopped his head off versus redirecting the lightning? Like what if the lightning wasn't coming from him? What if the lightning was just a broken cable that she re redirected? Who, who takes on the Sith at that point? What's, <laughs> she was very actively participating in his death is my point. Oh, this movie. I, I don't know. It was, I, I really wanted to enjoy it. And I think there's a, in my head, 
there's this story or this version of the trilogy that could have been amazing. And you, it, it, I kind of feel like they almost had that. They almost went that way. But whether it's producers or fear or concern that people won't be on board, that they change their mind. But the movie should have been from Kylo's point of view the entire time. All three should have been following him. Following him as a commander within the, um, uh, oh, I, I keep wanting to say dark side, <laughs> but that's not what I'm trying to say. The first order, first order. And he should have been under the impression that he was the good guy. That everything he was doing was for the betterment of the world. Because when you have a villain who knows he's the bad guy and is doing everything for an evil reason, you don't really have a villain. It's just, they're just so boring. They're just a, a caricature of evil and are not interesting at all. So if he thought, I'm doing the right thing. I'm saving the galaxy. I'm preserving my lineage, my family's name, and I'm going to protect everything, right? That that should have been what came out of Return of the Jedi. Uh, Darth Vader sacrifices himself. The rebels take over. And here we have Kylo Ren leading that group who have now become the enemy, who have now become the people in charge, and it could have been a story about how power corrupts and he is unaware of it. And then you have Ray and Finn and Poe and all of them coming in and screwing stuff up, coming in and destroying things, coming in and you, you know, you see them on monitors in the, in the commander's office or whatever you want to call it. Like you see that, you see stuff happening, but not from the point of view of the heroes, from the point of view of the bad guys from the point of view of the antagonist and seeing all this stuff get screwed up because then the lack of development of Ray, the lack of development of Poe, the lack of development of Finn doesn't matter. Them being Mary Sue's or whatever doesn't matter because we're not following them. We don't need to see them to have them justified as these things. They are just there to disturb Kylo. And Kylo is struggling with that and trying to understand why they're attacking him and him trying to stop them actively, only to realize about halfway through the trilogy that he is actually the bad guy, that he is the problem, that him confronting Han Solo is the moment of like, what have I become? Who am I? How did this happen? And like... From that point, you have the redemption, right? You, you get, we get the original story of Luke becoming the ultimate hero and Anakin becoming the ultimate villain. But we haven't gotten the story from the villain becoming the ultimate hero. And like, I know you can say that Anakin did or that Darth Vader did, however you want to look at that. But that was Luke's story. That wasn't Anakin's. That wasn't Darth Vader's. That was Luke's. But if we had the point of view, the following him as the bad guy, I think it would have been a new way to tell that story. And what we got is just the same story again with less investment, less importance. And uh, ultimately, it was disappointing. So, I don't know. That's kind of my thoughts on The Rise of Skywalker. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I'll probably post this on YouTube. I'm not quite sure if I will or not. But uh, yeah, thanks for taking a listen.